Greetings everyone, I'm Hoodie Angel Brandon. Today I'm doing another follow-up thoughts video on the Summer Nintendo Indies Showcase. And just before we dive in, I honestly don't know a lot about Indies. Uh, in this case I'm super out of my element. The number of indie games I've played can be counted with one hand. Specifically this one. One. One indie game. That's, that's, that's how many I've played. So, so, not super knowledgeable about this, but it's always cool to see new things and just give my thoughts on them. Uh, so, let's dive right in. Uh, first off, they opened with Super Meat Boy Forever. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with the original, but uh, the art style looked a little more vibrant, I guess, uh, which I liked that I was always kind of turned off by Meat Boy looking kind of like gritty, I guess. And it looks like this version is a more runner type game, uh, where you just keep moving forward and try and get throughout the stage. Um, it, it looked cool. Meat Boy was never something I was super hugely interested in, um, partially just because it looked kind of gross, but, uh, it, this one looks cool, uh, and it looks like a sequel, uh, and that's coming in 2018. Uh, following that, they showed Shovel Knight, King of Cards, which finally, I've been waiting for so long. Uh, King Knight is the campaign I was actually most excited for, and of course that one's the last one. So, uh, But it's like Spectre of Torment, it's going to be a prequel. Uh, they showed a lot of cool things in the short little time that they had to show it. Uh, like, one of them was he was using a hammer. Uh, and they also have a card battling mini game. Uh, the, honestly, the chance of Shovel Knight is why I watched the video. So, uh, But that's coming early 2018. Once again, it, it was delayed. But uh, as shown with Spectre of Torment... Uh, when Yacht Club delays the game, the product comes out and it's very nice. So looking forward to that one, definitely for sure. Uh, and then next was a kind of like point and click kind of looking thing. It was called Mom Hid My Game and it's exactly what it says on the tin. Mom hid your game, you have to find it. And it ranged from easy moving books on a bookshelf too absurd with where it was hidden inside of a crocodile's mouth uh and you've got to like kind of figure out the puzzle of that stage and figure out how to get your game back uh it's an interesting concept and it, it looks pretty simple both in terms of the game itself and the art style but simple isn't bad uh it looked interesting uh i think the price on that one will be kind of important to whether or not it's worth picking up but that's coming late 2017. Following that was Golf Story, which is a golf RPG. That's... I want to say that would be two things I'd never think I'd ever hear together in the same sentence. But suddenly I'm remembering that Steven Universe actually had a golf RPG in it. Golf Quest Mini. So I guess the golf overlords are coming for us. Uh... And that's going to be a Switch exclusive on September 2017. Uh, it actually looks quite good. Uh, the sprites are very detailed and very pretty. Uh, not enough gameplay was shown, though, for that one. Uh, I would have liked to see more of the actual gameplay instead of just kind of them walking around. Uh, but that one looks interesting. Uh, if nothing else, just for the concept of a golf RPG. Uh, Next, they showed a rhythm breakdancing game called Floor Kids. Uh, the art style for that one was like kind of like an animation sketch. Uh, it, it was kind of rough, but very cute. Uh, really cool. I liked that one a lot. Uh, and one thing I'm learning from this is Indies come up with some really cool art styles. I, I, really, I really like a lot of the art styles they showed today. Uh, but so... Uh, well, rhythm games generally aren't something I'm typically interested in, mostly because I'm not good at them, because <laughs> I lack any sense of rhythm. Uh, 
it's not something I'd normally play, but again, that's, that cute art style makes me a little interested. Uh, and that's going to have single and multiplayer, and it's a timed exclusive for the Switch in 2017. Uh, a lot of these games that they're that were in this presentation either are exclusive, were like a timed exclusive, or they were just launching first. Uh, so, yeah, that that's a lot of these are at least like launching on consoles first for the Switch, uh, which it's interesting to see Nintendo uh, making an effort to actually draw people towards them for the indie games like buffing up their indie library uh but the next game was wolverblade which was a hand-drawn beat-em-up uh which again launches first on the switch september 2017 uh again not a game that i would typically play but i'd give this one a shot it looked kind of interesting and it's got like a historical aspect to it which i'm i'm I, i'm down with um uh, the next game was Poly Bridge, which is coming holiday 2017 uh, as a console exclusive. It's like a architectural puzzle game with like physics and stuff. It's cool. Another one of those things that I probably wouldn't get super deep with. Uh, Mario Maker didn't hold my interest for very long. Uh, not as big into like the build your own things and just, I don't know. Uh, but it looks good. Uh, and then the next game was Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. Apparently, something. This is the fifth chapter. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Uh, the the aesthetic is kind of cool though. Uh, that's coming early 2018, uh, and the Switch version will have all the previous chapters and the whole story and everything in it. So, if you're a fan of that, then it might be worth it to pick up the Switch edition. Uh, and Next, they showed a side-scrolling shooter, uh, Earth Atlantis, uh, also another one of those games that has that hand-drawn look, uh, really pretty. Uh, it launches first on the Switch in the fall, and it actually looks pretty fun. Uh, and next up was Next Up Hero, where you are like exploring stages, and when you die, it actually creates a... I think they called it an echo, but it was like a spirit or whatever. And it actually shows up in your friend's game in the same place or wherever. And they can revive it and it becomes a compute or it becomes an AI companion for them, which is really cool. I like that a lot. Like, I'm someone who generally prefers single player camp games to multiplayer. But that would give me a sort of way to play with my friends without really playing with my friends. Uh, really cool. I like that a lot. And it could also be really cool for people who want to play together, but they can't get their schedules to sync up. You know, time zones or work schedules and whatever. I think there's a lot of potential for stuff like that. Uh, and that's coming early 2018. It'll also have a regular co-op with the Joy-Con. I just think that one's super cool. I'm That one's... Uh, one that I'm really interested to see more in. Uh, and then following that, they showed Steam World Dig 2, uh, which was also shown last year. And then it kind of just fell off the radar and didn't talk anything about it from what I ever saw. Uh, but they had the trailer here. Uh, it's coming September 21st as a world premiere on the Switch. Um, it looks cool, but they didn't really show a whole lot that they didn't show last time. Uh... So I would have liked to see more new stuff. Uh, and the narration kind of summed up the plot uh, of what you're doing. But I couldn't really get past that like half Western accent. It was just, it just, it was awful. Please, no more of that. I, I would not want to hear that the whole game, please. Uh, the next game they showed off was Mulaka, which this one is another one of those that looked really cool. Uh, they had this, it was like you run around and it kind of reminded me of like a, the 3D Zelda games where you're running around and you engage enemies and everything. Uh, but you've also got to go into like places and solve puzzles. And it also had a really cool mechanic where you can transform into different animals. Uh, 
that one's really interesting looking and the art style was kind of it, it, again it reminded me a lot of like Ocarina of Time where it had this 3D but it was kind of uh it wasn't super detailed 3D uh that's coming early 2018 and it, it looks really cool I like that one a lot uh and then they showed Yono the Celestial Elephant which was just so cute it's a cute little elephant um uh, and it showed him like solving puzzles. He has a bunch of different things he can do, like spraying water out of his nose. Uh, and that's coming October 12th as a console exclusive. I want to get excited for that one, but I think I need more gameplay. They didn't show enough there, but what they did show is just so adorable. Uh, so that's another one I'd want to look forward to seeing more on. Uh, following that was Dragon Marked for Death from uh, the people who did. Uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt, which is a game I was going to play and then just never got around to. Uh, much like Gunvolt, the sprites look really clean, really nice. Uh, that's launching as a Switch exclusive in the winter. And the art reminds me a lot of Phantom Brave. Uh, I think it was like a kind of like a side scrolly RPG type thing. Uh, I'd have to look more into that one. Uh, but what I did see was cool. Uh, Following that was Battle Chef Brigade, which my my very first reaction to seeing that was, oh my god, they made a Toriko game. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Toriko, I think that was it, uh, was a manga. I, it might be ongoing, I don't know. Uh, but back when Shonen Jump was a thing, towards the end of Shonen Jump's lifespan, uh, they had a manga called Toriko where it was this guy who, like, he went around and, like, killed monsters to cook them and stuff. It was weird and interesting. I didn't read a lot of it, uh, mostly because I ended up canceling my Shonen Jump subscription around when it came out. But what I did read, it was kind of funny, it was interesting. Uh, I liked what I did read, what little I did read. Uh, but this, this reminded me a lot of that, where there were, like, these monsters, and then you were also cooking. Uh, You've got combat where you're running around fighting the monsters, and then puzzles, uh, by which I mean more like Tetris or Puyo Pop puzzles rather than Zelda puzzles, uh, for the actual cooking minigame type thing. Um, that's coming holiday 2017 as a Switch game first. Uh, that one's another one to that I think is really interesting. It, maybe it's just because it did remind me of Toriko, but that that's cool. I like that. After that, they showed a game called Morphe's Law, which, when they first, when it, like it first came on, I was like, oh, another shooter. But as much as I generally don't care for shooters, this one looks really interesting. Um, it's a multiplayer shooter with like a robot-esque creatures. Uh, they have like these little faces that kind of remind me. The, they're like hand drawn on looking, uh, remind, remind me of masks, uh, maybe it's just my love of Majora's Mask, but, uh, so at first wasn't expecting too much, but as the robots get shot, they lose and gain mass from each other, uh, so like, if you keep shooting guys in the head, you get a really big head, uh, and they will get shrunken heads, which is already a kind of a interesting, cool, cutesy gimmick. But, from what I saw, they did a great job of integrating that gimmick into the core gameplay, which is what I like to see. Uh, it, it affected everything from the map, because smaller characters could get places that bigger players couldn't. Uh, like, they showed them going down a tube uh, that a bigger robot wouldn't fit in, uh, to the combat, where people have been hit more makes it easier for them to dodge bullets, while players who are doing well and getting kills become a much larger target, making it easier for the making it easier for the losing team to mount a comeback. Uh, to just the general goal, which is to get enough mass to make your player team's avatar in the tallest one by the end of the match. It just looks really interesting. Uh, that's coming in winter and like I said, I'm not big on shooters, but this one really caught my attention. That one, Morphe's Law, looks really interesting. 
The game they showed after that was Sausage Sports Club. They didn't show a whole lot. Um, they're little animals with floppy necks running around playing sports. Uh, pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It looked cute, uh, but not enough was shown. Uh, that's coming fall 2017. Uh, and then it, really quick after that, they showed Light Fingers in early 2018. Uh, tabletop board game, I think is what it was. Uh, it was interesting, but I didn't see enough. I'm not really sure what that was. Uh, and then after that was Nine Parchments, a beat-em-up, but with wizards. They called it a blast-em-up. Uh, apparently it's from the Trine series, or it takes place in the world of the Trine series. Uh, I don't know much about Trine, but what I've seen of that series is it's very pretty, and that's much the case here. This game looked very gorgeous. Uh, and that's coming holiday 2017. And then final, or the last game they showcased was Travis Strikes Again. Uh, it was just a quick trailer, no real gameplay. Uh, but the very first thing I said when they pulled that up was, Don't litter. Don't litter. I know the guy was supposed to be like a bad guy or whatever, but he was littering and that pissed me off. But uh, that's for, it's the next installment, I guess, in the No More Heroes series. Uh... From art style alone, in the trailer, it looks really good. Like, it's got that like comic book kind of feel to it, kind of gritty. Uh, and I guess Travis gets trapped in a game world. All right. I I don't think. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the No More Heroes games, but that seems like a very random and weird departure from what it is about. So, uh, I don't know. Um. Uh, Someone who knows more about that, tell me if that's any good, because I have no clue. Uh, but, so, overall, I think it was pretty solid. Uh, they had a lot of interesting stuff here. Even the things that didn't appeal to me looked interesting. Uh, they still looked pretty fun. Uh, as for me, my personal standouts from the event, uh, Shovel Knight, King of Cards, of course. Uh, and then Next Up Hero, really liked the kind of multiplayer, but not aspect of that. Steamworld Dig uh, just looks fun. Uh, Maluka looks really interesting. Uh, love the animal transformation mechanic. Yono just looks adorable. Wanted more gameplay on that, though. Uh, Dragon Mark for Death looks interesting. Uh, Battle Chef Brigade just funny. And then Morphe's Law actually might be the most interesting thing they showed here, I think. Uh, so that's my thoughts. What did you guys think? What ones are you most looking forward to? Did anything really stand out to you? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching. This is Hoodie Angel Brandon, signing out.